morning hope you guys are doing well today uh, today i'm going to show you how to do the interior pre-flight cockpit setup on the pc12 but first i'm going to stop at the fbo for some coffee all right i got my coffee now and um, so i'll walk you guys through some of this so one of the first things i do um, or it's not always the first thing but i always do a, a flight log and a takeoff and landing data calculation and that's kind of for my records and also so i know what performance to expect um, so I plug all the weights and everything into the Pilatus um, calculator app, PC12 calculator, it's available on the app store. And um, then it'll give you all of your uh, takeoff numbers. And I went ahead and did this, you guys didn't have to suffer watching me do it. But um, I put all that in there and I started doing this um, a lot because if I have to do a zero flap landing, like if you have ice on the airplane, then the performance numbers are quite a bit different. You can see here for um, the approach speed with zero degrees of flaps, it's 10 knots faster than with 15, and which is another 10 knots faster than 30 degrees. <clears throat> and um, I also do these numbers with zero wind and with no reverse for the landing. And that kind of gives me a, a margin of error there. Um, and again, the landing roll with zero degrees of flaps is quite a bit longer, 500 feet for the ground roll and 1100 feet for the landing over 50. So I always calculate that before flight and I always use the temperature. I write it down here in case it's different. So if it's warmer then I know I might not have the performance that I was planning on. And I just get that from, um, from for flight here, uh, from the, the daily. You can go in there and click on it and it'll give you the hourly. And so I plan on the times um, and that way I can do both legs for the day or however many legs I have. And then again, that temperature, writing it down, if we uh, shift the time, departure times for our flights, um, then I can know if I, if I will expect worse performance than I was planning on. So we'll head out to the airplane and I'll show you what I do in the cockpit. All right, we got the airplane pulled out. I'll show you guys uh, cockpit setup. We'll get it set up. Um, passengers are about to show up, so. We've got uh, drinks and snacks on board. Um, this drawer here has got a nice tray. I, this comes right out, um, and I keep that in the fridge so it's always cold. And then I keep some snacks over here. Looks good. And then um, all the seats, seat belts are good. Got some luggage to load here. And uh, so we come in here, the first thing we do is uh, turn the standby bus on, and we got test the emergency power supply. So we'll test it, the light comes on, count to five, three, four, five, and turn it on, the red EPS button should be on. So up here on the switch panel, um, we really don't touch most of the electrical power management switches. The only ones we touch normally are the standby and battery one and battery two and EPS. So everything else stays up. So when you come out to check the switches, you wanna make sure that avionics one, cabin bus, avionics two, gen one, gen two, and the master power are all on. Fuel pumps are always on auto, ignition is always on auto. And uh, so you got five up on the main um, switch panel here, five up and three down when you first come out to the airplane. And then the avionics will start to come up. So in the meantime, we'll start here on the left side and uh, I always do it as a flow, and then we can verify with the uh, checklist here. So um, control lock is almost never on, um, but it's stowed back there. And we've got the 110 AC power on. Emergency switch is in normal. Oral warning is on. I'll make sure we haven't inhibited it. This morning I had uh, GPS updates going, and so it was inhibited. Make sure we switch it back. Um, then the mic select. Should be on mic, not mask. We've got passengers, so we'll turn the oxygen to auto. It's got auto and on. Auto is when the uh, airplane senses the pressure, cabin pressure is too high, and it'll auto flow oxygen to the passengers. Or you can turn it on manually if you want. The um, pilot and co-pilot oxygen masks are on demand. And uh, while we're talking about that, I'm going to make sure that the mask is uh, set to 100% there and that the pressure gauge, you've got an oxygen pressure gauge here in the co cockpit, and wanna make sure it matches with the outside. The outside was about 1200, so it looks like they match. Hobbs meter matches. We've got a circuit breaker panel here, and 
that all looks good. Got a power junction box down here, and that's for the higher power items like the prop de ice and windshield. And there's one on both sides. So then here at the ice protection, everything should be off except the inertial separator should be on. The landing gear should be down. And then we'll come around here. We can turn the oxygen on. You should hear it come out of both masks. Um, does a little self-test. And you can hear that. And then we make sure that the all these uh, dimmer switches are all turned up and that the PFD is in normal both sides. ELT is armed. Trim interrupt is normal. Flap interrupt is normal. Flaps are up unless we've been doing a quick turn. Condition lever is at idle cutoff. Power control lever is at idle. And you can't go into reverse without the engine running. It can bend the linkages, so you want to make sure you don't ever do that. Got the manual override or the more lever here. It should be stowed. This pops out like that and then goes forward for emergency situations. So make sure it's back and stowed so you don't accidentally bump it. Make sure all these switches are off, unless it's nighttime, I guess as appropriate. Then down here you've got the emergency fuel shut off. You want to make sure that's shut off. And you want to make sure this cover is on. Under here is the emergency gear extension. So you want to make sure you're not going to accidentally bump that. And then you've got the ACS emergency shut off. And you would pull that in emergency like if you had an engine fire or a contamination from the pressurization air. And uh, so in the ACS, um, bleed air, all the electrical heat and cabin pressure control switches, um, all the environmental should be in auto, except for the flood fan, I'll inhibit it um, unless it's really hot because it's pretty loud for passengers back there. But it does cool the cabin down pretty quick in the summer. The cabin pressure control should be in auto, and you should be in auto and not dump on the cabin pressure. There's another junction box over here. All those are in. And another switch uh, circuit breaker panel on this side. Everything's good. And you got some more um, switches here. You got a mic mask uh, selector for the co-pilot, the CVR or CVFDR um, tests and erase. Um, the MAU data load. That switch you can switch on to um, turn on the systems you need to if you need to update the databases uh, without being on ground power unit. But the battery only lasts for 25 minutes, so it's a lot better to be on ground power. And then you've got the entertainment Wi-Fi switch here and that is turned on. All right, so now we can set up the um, FMS here and something really cool um, actually just yesterday for flight came out with an update um, so now we can push flight plans from for flight to the panel so to do that I've already done it for today I had it turned on and tested it this morning make sure it worked and so once you have it up and it's all initialized you can do it just on standby power don't have to be on ground power or batteries um, you push it just like you would on any other um, system from ForeFlight. You can do it from the maps page or the flight plan page or flight plate page. And um, so what you do is you go in here and select gateway and it'll pull it in and it'll be listed here. So you can click that and then it'll pull in the data. So we've got Goshen and Worcester and I didn't, I did it from the maps page which um, as far as I know, you can't put an alternate there. Um, so there's no alternate pulled in, but we'll insert that. And it will have Goshen, Mansfield, Worcester, which is our route. And um, it will also not pull in procedures, so you can't load preload approaches, SIDs, and STARS, and things. So hopefully they get that um, worked out, and you can do that at some point. Um, so we'll go back to pilot, and we'll set in the alternate. And we've got Akron Canton, KCAK. Hit enter, insert, we'll activate that, and then we can set our altitude and speed, so we're going 19,000, and fuel is about uh, 1578 I think is what it was, we'll put that in there, and it'll pull that in once we're on batteries, but while we're, while we're waiting for passengers here we don't want to run on, on the batteries. So we're going to have three extra people on board today, average 200. There's some bags. We'll go ahead and put 80 for bags. And the compute. And then that will uh, load a, a VNAV profile for us. 
All right, so we can close this. Um, oh, also you can, if you wanted to get a clearance, you can click radios here and that'll pull up COM2. So we can co communicate on COM2 uh, while we're sitting here on the ground just on standby power. And double check all this. We've got Goshen, Demansfield, Worcester, and Akron Canton. And that's how I set up the cockpit in the Plata's PC-12. Thanks for watching.